Fermata is a protocol designed for microcontrollers to communicate with a host computer. With Fermata, the programmer can create applications on a computer that interact with a remote microcontroller and read or change the state of the microcontroller's pins. On the Arduino, Fermata is implemented as a sketch or firmware. Once the Fermata sketch is uploaded to the Arduino, it is able to interact with a host computer running a program that also implements the Fermata protocol. In this lecture, I will demonstrate how you can use Fermata to make it possible for an Arduino to interact with a processing sketch. Let's check it out. Hi, welcome back. By now, you should have a good understanding of what processing is. In this lecture, I'd like to uh, connect processing with the Arduino. And probably the easiest way to do that is to play around with the Fermata protocol. For the demonstration in this lecture, I'll be using an Arduino 101. It uh, looks like a Nuno, but it's got an Intel processor on it. And I've got a section on the Arduino 101 uh, elsewhere in this course. But for now, don't worry about it because everything I show you uh, will work perfectly fine on any other Arduino, including the Arduino Uno. All I've got here is a button and a big LED. Uh, I've got the button connected to Let's see, uh, digital pin 12. So digital pin 12 is going to be an input. And the big LED is connected to digital pin number 9. And I'll be using a processing program to read the status of the button and to change the status of the LED. On the Arduino 101, I'll be running the firm ATA sketch. It's a sketch that implements the firm ATA protocol. And then in serial mode, the sketch will communicate with its counterpart in the processing language, and it will be doing the reading and the writing to and from the Arduino. So let's start with the Arduino side first. I've got my Arduino IDE already started and I will go to File and Examples and down here you'll see Firm Ata. Now if you don't see Firm Ata, then you will need to install the Firm Ata library and again to do that then you go to Sketch, Include Library and up here Manage Libraries and Search for firm ATA. Just install the first option that you get. In my case, is already installed. If it's not installed for you, just select the first option and install it. And once you have firm ATA installed, go back to examples, firm ATA, and I'd like to bring up the standard firm ATA sketch. So bring that up. And don't worry too much about what's in here. We're not really going to be concerned with any of this. It's uh, just the code that implements the firm ATA protocol in Arduino. Okay, so let's upload it. I'll double check that I've got the correct settings in the IDE. The port is not appearing yet. Let's give it a moment. Okay, and so do we know 101, so upload it. Okay, so upload completed. I'll start executing in five seconds. So now we've got the standard firm ATA sketch on the Arduino. I'll go to processing and pick up the firm ATA sketch for the Arduino. So I'll start with Arduino input and see if we can read the button. So start the Arduino input sketch. Here it is. 
or I should say program, not sketch, but I get confused between processing and the Arduino ID, they're so similar. So let's um, run it and then we'll go through it. So the Arduino underscore input window, uh, what you get here are the boxes that represent the digital inputs. So this row of the headers, this row of the headers is represented by this row of boxes on the processing canvas window. And I have the button which is connected to a digital pin. Uh, it was 12, uh, as we saw earlier. Now this is represented by this box here on my canvas. So you can see that as I'm pressing it, the box changes color. So it's now pressed down the pin, the digital pin input is low. I'll let the button go back up to its resting position and the digital pin 12 is at high now. The rest are just fluctuating, it's just random numbers, There's nothing connected and they're not configured. Down here, these circles represent the analog pins. So they represent the pins in this header down here. And again, I've got nothing connected. So uh, you just get random values. So the larger the value, the random value it is, then the biggest, the bigger the circle it is. What I'll do just to demonstrate how that bit works is I'm going to plug in this linear potentiometer really quickly onto my breadboard and then connect it to one of the analog pins. So I'll plug that here. The nice thing, or another nice thing about the Arduino 101 is that it is 5 volt tolerant. So I'm going to put that to ground alongside the LED. So here, it's 5 volt tolerant, so it's a very safe board to use, even though it uh, operates at 3.3 volts. 3.3 volts are on this rail on the breadboard, so I'll just plug it here. It's a very safe board to use, as I said, because these integrated circuits here, these here are uh, level shifters. So it allows the device to operate safely between the 5 and the 3 volts. Anyway, more about this in the section on the Arduino 101. I'll get a screwdriver. Got the potentiometer connected. Hopefully it is connected correctly. But that still works. And now you can see this little circle here is analog pin zero. And as I'm turning the knob of the rotary potentiometer, the size of the circle changes. So you could have your processing sketch that receives input from the Arduino, from whatever you have connected to its digital pins and its analog pins. And then you can do something interesting with that data. Any analog or digital sensor will do. Actually, a digital sensor other than buttons won't do much. You'll have to translate the values into um, text and then send them to processing via the serial interface. Let's have a quick look at the Arduino input sketch. Uh, and you've got your setup function. It generates the canvas for drawing. This is where you generate the Arduino object essentially, but more important inside its constructor, you'll see that uh, we are picking up a cell from a list of available ports, from a list of available ports or right here. This gives you a list of available ports and these ports are listed 
down here. Basically, these are the available serial interfaces on your computer. And it's only one of those serial interfaces that correspond to your Arduino. So you need to either look at the list that the sketch, the processing sketch gives you to begin with, and then figure out which one of those corresponds to your Arduino. In my case, this is the port that corresponds to the Arduino. And then uh, count the index for this port. This one will be index number zero. The second one in the list will be index number one. This one is index number two. And finally, this one is index number three. And then take that three and put it into this cell here so that the Arduino is initialized with the correct serial port. So this number may be different for you, depends on uh, the configuration of your USB ports and whether you have other devices connected as well. But the first time that you run the processing program slash sketch, it will give you a list of available serial ports then you figure out the index for the one that represents your Arduino and put that index into the bracket here to get started. Because we've selected the normal Arduino underscore input sketch uh, instead of the mega version so this is the version for the mega Arduino boards with a lot more digital input output pins, then uh, the sketch knows that it's got 13 input output pins to work with. So that's why we've got this loop here. It, conv it uh, assigns all of the pins to be inputs. Inside draw, the sketch will go and read the status of each one of the 13 inputs, input pins, and it will accordingly either fill it with a white background to indicate that the pin has a state of high or empty it so that it looks empty, which represents state low. Then it will do the same thing, the exact same thing for the five analog inputs. So here you've got your five analog inputs in the loop and it will read their state using this instruction here, do a calculation to figure out how wide the circle should be, and then use the ellipse instruction keyword to create the circle. And ellipse so can go to the reference, And LFC is a two-dimensional primitive that allows you to draw a circle. So you just need to give it uh, the X and Y coordinates. And then the width of the ellipse and the height of the ellipse. Or if you want this to be a perfect circle, then these two numbers are the same. So this is how the firm other input version of the sketch works. What about controlling the digital pins? Let's have a look at another example, the output example, which allows you to control the digital pins as outputs. All right, so I have my big LED connected to digital pin number nine. All right, so the sketch down here gives me the list of ports that it's detected. And the one that my Arduino is connected to is the last one. So we've got index 0, 1, 2, 3. So I'll take the figure 3 and I will use it in setup here. All right, so... Uh, the Arduino list instruction will return all available ports in an array. I'll pick up the port in cell 3 or index 3 and that will then become the port that this processing sketch will be listening for instructions from the Arduino. All right, so run that. So the boxes 
represent the digital pins on this header. So I believe that number nine pin zero one two three four five six seven eight nine this one should be digital pin nine so there you go bright red so you can control your Arduino from a sketch running on your desktop you can also export this program as a standalone application which opens up a few interesting possibilities as well so from the file menu choose export application and choose the settings that you prefer in my case i'm also going to embed java so that the application that is produced is completely self-contained and just click on export and here it is this is my standalone application i'll get rid of processing for now and just execute arduino output the application i just generated it'll take up the whole screen because i've chosen demonstration mode and uh, i think this was number nine there you go so now i can run my processing application and interact with the Arduino connected to serial port number three without needing to run the processing IDE. Completely self-contained application. Okay, stop that. All right, so that's an example of what you can do with Firm Arta. In the next lecture, I'm going to give you uh, another example of how to interact with your Arduino independently of Firm Arta just by using the serial interface to send and receive instructions back and forth from the Arduino and just do a little bit of drawing in the canvas of our own. I'll be using the accelerometer that is embedded in the Intel processor on the Arduino 101 to visualize the, the, the values that the accelerometer sensor is producing. So let's move on to the next lecture.